Welcome to a special presentation from Rogers TV. Looking back at the 2011 Ontario Hockey League Championship between the Owen Sound Attack and the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. I'm Manny Pava, and with me for this special presentation, Mark McKelvey. Well, Manny, can you believe it's been 10 years already since the Owen Sound Attack captured their first Ontario Hockey League Championship, and they didn't do it uh, in the regular fashion, I guess you could say, because this is a series that is long going to be remembered, whether we're talking about it now 10 years later or we'll be talking about it 50 years from now. This was a classic OHL championship series as the attack battled the majors for the J. Ross Robertson Cup. Not only did it end in seven games, it ended in seven games in dramatic fashion. And not only was this an historic se series for the Owen Sound franchise, but I think as an OHL fan, Mark, everyone will remember this seven game series i think so i think a lot of people when you talk to them about the fact that how the series ended like you mentioned and we we're going to get to that uh coming up but just the way that this entire series played out the ups and downs on both sides of a roller coaster ride a lot of emotion and uh, again you take the smallest market in the ontario hockey league and they had an opportunity to take down the number one team the team that was going to be hosting the memorial cup and uh again Attack fans will remember it for a long time, but to your point, this is one that OHL fans will always remember. And as part of this special anniversary, 10-year anniversary, Rogers TV will be showing all seven games of the OHL Championship Series, and it will also host a special attack wrap with members of that 2011 Owen Sound Championship team. In this broadcast, we will be replaying game two of this series, a game mark where Owen Sound found themselves down one game to none, heading back to the Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Center. Yeah, the series alternating. So we started in Mississauga in game one, and that was a game really where the majors, I think, made a statement and they took it to the attack. Both teams were pretty fresh. Both teams have been off a week. They didn't have to go too deep in their conference final series. Of course, Owen Sound defeated Windsor to take the Western Conference, while it was the Mississauga St. Michael Majors defeating the Niagara Ice Dogs to win the East. Both teams were rested, but home ice would play a big factor in Game 1, and Owen Sound was hoping that would be the case for them, heading back to the Scenic City for Game 2. That's right. Mississauga winning Game 1, 5-2. to two. Scott Stager in goal for Owen Sound. He did his part, making 23 saves against J.P. Anderson in goal, making 26 saves. And Robbie McNardi scoring both goals for Owen Sound in that opening game. So it would be Stager against Anderson in Game 2. Hope, Owen Sound hoping to turn things around on home ice. We will. And safe to say, Manny, Owen Sound thought they were going to use home ice to their advantage. Mississauga certainly had a game plan to take the crowd out of it early. And it certainly worked for them in that first period. Coming up next on Rogers TV. Welcome back. Owen Sound nearly set for game two of the Rogers OHL Championship Series. Here is our national anthem. Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all our sons' command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true nor strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Likely 3,500 in attendance somewhere in that neighborhood jammed into the building for game two of the OHL Championship Series. Tonight's starting goaltenders are brought to you by Dickies. 
the official workwear partners of the Western Hockey League, the OHL, and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League for the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. Terrific numbers. J.P. Anderson once again gets the call. He turned aside 28 of 29 in a 5-2 victory in Game 1 on Tuesday. He's a prospect of the San Jose Sharks at the other end. A fifth-round draft pick of the New York Rangers, 19-year-old Scott Stager. 24 of 27 in the save department in the Game 1 setback at the Hershey Center on Tuesday night. The referees are Scott Holberg and Scott Ferguson. The linesmen are Ryan Lachine and Jordan Broline. Sam, you really could make an argument, couldn't you, that never has a bigger game been played in this arena. It's the first trip ever for this Owen Sound team to the OHL Championship Series. You go back to the late 90s, a pretty good team there. And then you go to the 06-07. A lot of people thought Owen Sound would do some good things there as well, but nothing like what it is here tonight and I think the building pretty early on is letting you know that Mark, Mark Reed's the head coach of the Owen Sound attack the Ontario Hockey League's coach of the year and for good reason what a fine job he's done with this hockey club Jesse Blacker the former Windsor Spitfire slides it and didn't quite get to center ice before doing so keys to the game are brought to you by Irwin tools makers of groove lock vice grip pliers a simple push of a button adjust jaws two times faster visit Irwin.com for more stay the course if you're Dave Cameron's Mississauga St. Michael's majors why change anything they've been great in the playoffs and for Owen Sound you really need to play a patient game the team's top lines matched against one another Casey Sezikis versus Joey Hishon. Those are the centers of the respective lines. Roman Burdnikov moved up on that first line for Owen Sound. Hishon trying to shovel it underneath him, and the play is blown down. Well, Joey Hishon down on the ice and just trying to put his glove uh, well in the crease, but a bit of a change here. Fritch out of the lineup for the Owen Sound attack, and Roman Burdnikov moves up to that top line. Fritch dealing with a lower body injury, has played just four playoff games so far, and so Burdnikov, when Fritch has been out of the lineup, normally sees time on the top line. But Mark Reed says, hey, that's all subject to change. Burdnikov really needs to get his game going, especially the physical grinding type game that he on occasion can play. Burdnikov hails from Omsk in Russia, his father in the building for this contest tonight, and he has six postseason goals for the attack. Brett Fleming, his shot blocked by Petri. Chris D'Souza, who's been an important acquisition, centered on in front, gobbled up by Shaw, and the puck makes its way to neutral ice. Riley Brace carries in. Brace's shot that tests Stager, and he'll hang on, and some pushing and shoving. You can expect the intensity to ramp up as this set continues. And Rob Flick will be in the middle of that, no doubt about it. A collision course since the February uh, 26th date. These two clubs have been outstanding. The Majors win 10 going down the stretch to wrap up the regular season. The Attack win 8 out of 9. They've carried that momentum both teams have into the playoffs. And what a run it has been for both clubs, as you would expect in a championship game number one against number two. Mississauga has won 23 of its last 24 games. Yeah, that's quite a run for Dave Cameron's hockey club. And a, just a little blip in the radar in the Niagara series. And... Uh, you know, Dave Cameron has learned a couple of things uh, along the way here. Big chop down onto the stick. And so the home side will be down a man as Petgrave gets called. Petgrave, who enjoyed a night to remember in the final game of the Western Conference Championship versus Windsor when he scored three goals and added an assist to eliminate the two-time defending Memorial Cup champions. Takes an early seat in the penalty box, and there's a guy who won a MasterCard Memorial Cup one year ago in Windsor. Yeah, and for his great work this year, was rewarded with a NHL contract signed with the Boston Bruins recently. Mississauga with an early power play, shot to the front of the net, he scores! and made it look rather easy. Justin Shug, his sixth of the postseason, and Mississauga strikes first. Now the Owen Sound attack uh, get taken advantage of there on the power play, and you'll see right here the draw is won, but the puck can't be cleared. Shug simply gets his stick in the road, and from there he's able to take it and walk out from the side boards completely untouched. 
That puck, once it gets back to the defenseman in the face-off win, it has to go the distance of the ice. You cannot in big games decide to fool around and be cute or waste extra time. That puck needs to go the distance right away. And when it doesn't, Justin Shug takes advantage for a sixth. The fourth round pick of the Carolina Hurricanes in 2010. Waste little time giving Mississauga a 1-0 lead. And Shug in a position to do something that only one other player in CHL history has done. And that's to win three consecutive MasterCard Memorial Cups. The other, a gentleman by the name of Robert Savard. As Stager juggles and hangs on. And again, more pushing and shoving after the whistle. Yeah, and I think you're going to see a lot of this with Owen Sound trying to get fired up and, and say, hey, in our building, you're not going to come in here and walk all over us. Jamie Wise involved. He's had a nice playoff run, and that third, fourth line energy type role for Dave Cameron continues to do that here and be a bit of an agitator as well. Cramarosa into it a little bit with Brendan Childerly, and Cramarosa has really come on this season for Dave Cameron's team. Kind of laughs, and I think they're both going to spend some time in the penalty box. Yeah, I think the officials here really just want to make sure that things don't get out of hand early. Here we are, just a minute 47 into this hockey game and things starting to get nasty early on. And you know what, Peter? This nastiness that you're seeing here as Stager covers the puck up was not present in the first period of game number one in Mississauga, 1-5-2 by the majors. Both coaches felt that, hey, you know, maybe it was nerves, maybe it was the championship thing, maybe it was the fact that each had won their conference, or maybe it was the fact that they both know they're going to play in the MasterCard Memorial Cup. For whatever reason, that playoff intensity wasn't there in game one, but it's pretty evident here early in game two. Four on four hockey early on. This is the Russian world junior gold medalist, Maxim Kitson, to Jordan Mayer, returns it to Kitson. He's a six-round pick of the Los Angeles Kings and might be a real steal at that point. He's very gifted. His pass for Canton broken up, and McNarty makes his way out of the zone as Liam Helis turns back in his own territory for Petrich. Canton, a rough shoulder shot from McNarty. Mayer in transition, Canton is shot. It goes off Shemitz's skates and wide of the net. More pressure by the Majors. Canton dishes good stick by Shemitz, and he'll deflect it out to center. Justin Shug, his sixth of the playoffs, has opened the scoring at 125. Unassisted. Casey Sezikis wheels into the zone around Petre. Back out with Shug. Helis. Ducks underneath Sezikis and finds Garrett Wilson, the big winger in Florida draft pick. Wilson's enjoyed a terrific season and postseason for that matter. He is a low. Blacker keeps it alive at the line and Percy takes over. As Hishin collides with goaltender J.P. Anderson. You know, head coach Mark Reeds told us before the game that he felt his team turned too many pucks over, especially in that second period in which they were outshot 21-7. Here Owen Sound on the breakup. Patrave, Petgrave can't receive the pass. It's a quick bump that Canton is able to take the hit. But look at the transition. It's a three on two back the other way. Now, nothing results in that, Peter. But the fact of the matter is, hey, inside the neutral zone, you really have to take care of the puck. A pass that gets into the skates of Petgrave is turned into a chance the other way. Blacker racing in. Shaw was lifted, basically, at the blue line offside. And he's not very happy about the stoppage in play. Yeah, a lot of stoppages in play here in the early going of this game as these two teams ratchet up the intensity and get it more like it should be here in a championship series. Blacker, 12 points in these playoffs. He's a second round pick of the Toronto Maple Leafs. David Corrente. Corrente. Bumped by Blacker, slides it in deep where Matt Stanish takes over to his defense partner, Blacker. Stanish to Andrew Shaw with Garrett Wilson. Just nine seconds left in the coincidentals and Owen Sound looks a little nervous here in the early going. Yeah, a little discombobulated. Shaw out of the line, no farther. Daniels leap back in the lineup because of the absence of Andrew Fritsch. And he's a load at 6'5", 230 pounds. He's number 25 for the attack. And he'll get to the puck now, sliding it into the zone. 
Mayer held up by Wilson. Mississauga nearly caught with too many men on the ice as Canton jumped off the bench and the puck hit him. Jordan Mayer, he scored in game one of the championship final on Tuesday. And offside will be the call. Well, Peter, here we are in the Ontario Hockey League Championship. This is game two, game one of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League going tonight. Uh, St. John versus Gatineau at Harbor Station. That game is at 1-1. Portland and Kootenay will start game one tomorrow night in Portland. And the winners of those respective championships will represent their leagues at the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Gatineau and St. John tied at one in the second at Harbor Station. What can you say about Benny Drew does with the Gatineau Olympic? Has them back in another final. They were the fifth seed going into the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League playoffs. Pretty nice comfort level. He coaching in Gatineau. It just seems to be a great fit. And who knows, maybe they have another run like 2008 when they stunned Halifax. St. John won 58 games. They'll have other ideas. Stanish to Roman Burdnikov. Carries in on right wing. Slides it to Wilson. And Sezik is back defensively to break it up. To Devontae smith Pelly, the Anaheim second rounder. And Blacker with a good stick to redirect that out of play. You know, Peter, when you look at the captain of your hockey club, you want him to lead by example. We talked about Casey Sezikis off the top of the broadcast and what he's been able to do. But here on the back check, he's able to be in good position right here. The puck is turned over right to him. Immediately, the majors able to initiate the attack the other way. Peter, it's about good positioning. It's about hustle. And it's about hard work. On most nights, Casey Sezikis brings that to the table. Fourth round pick of the New York Islanders in 2009. Shaw ties to one-handed in front. Palmo behind the net, upended by Brett Fleming. Fleming now without his stick, pushes at Halmo. Halmo down low, and Percy will ice the puck. Peter, it's been an interesting situation uh, in Owen Sound when it comes to the goaltender. Scott Stager started the year, and when he got hurt in November, was arguably the league's best goaltender, but he missed a ton of time. He ends up getting in for about nine and a half minutes in the Plymouth series, and Michael Zador ended up taking over the load. He and Jordan Binnington split the time. Of course, Zador uh, acquired in the trade. Binnington scratched Michael Zador, the backup here tonight to Scott State. And Binnington, a highly touted goaltender for the upcoming 2011 NHL draft. Sam, I think he was the best goaltender at the top prospects game in January at the Air Canada Center. He was fantastic. And Peter, you opine that there's probably no other team in the CHL that has the luxury of having three really good goalies. Not like that trail. Palmo. Owen Sound looking to assert themselves after giving up the early goal to Justin Shaw. Flick to Riley Brace, one of two braces in the game. The other, Cameron, who performs for Owen Sound. And Halmo now into it. And we're going to have more penalties. We will sort those out when we return. Slick is no stranger to that whatsoever. Shaw taking on a bigger customer, handling himself early in the tussle. But Flick, of course, able to respond. And the no love lost theme that started here early in this game continues on as this first period rolls on. Mark Reeds, the first team OHL coach of the year, as the All-Stars were announced earlier this week, and rightly so. He and Dale DeGray have done a masterful job. This is an organization that did not make the playoffs one season ago and find themselves in the MasterCard Memorial Cup and right now, more importantly, in this OHL final. If you talk about the Ontario Hockey League uh, All-Stars, the first team All-Stars, Mark Reed named the head coach for that. Joey Hishon and Garrett Wilson of Owen Sound involved. Tyler Foley with a year. Leading the league in goals with 57. Ryan Ellis, the Ontario Hockey League's player of the year. Ryan Murphy, you got to love to watch him play. And Mark Visentine, the goaltender in 2010-11, first team All-Stars in the Ontario Hockey League. Mark Reeds wants to chat with the referees, and they've been busy in the first 6-13 of game number two of this OHL championship affair. Shaw apparently 
taking an instigator penalty. And at the end of this, the majors are going to end up with a five on three power play. And you can tell that's not a popular decision here in Owen Sound. And Mark Reese tried to get the explanation. It wasn't uh, given to him. And you could bet that when he gets the opportunity, he'll be letting his feelings heard throughout the arena. Shug, the game's goal getter to Mark Canton as Mississauga works five on three. Stuart Percy to Shug. Deals Canton snapped his stick in two. He'll have to go to the bench for another one. Casey Sizikas to Shug. Part of that broken stick still in an interesting area. Shug again to handle. Into the corner, back to the line, it's Kent. Sezikis off the stick and cleared down the ice by Matt Stent. Got to have an active stick, especially in the five on three. When you're down two men, there's tons of ice out there. The more active the stick is, the better you have a chance of breaking up the play, as Hishin did there. The shot goal, by the way, was a power play goal. The second early in this series for St. Mike's. Fleming just keeps it in. Feed down low, backhand try, and a good one from Jordan Mayer, who just missed. Fleming thought about it. Brett Fleming a drive, Steger a big save, keeps in a whack at it. D'Souza was there too, and winning a battle is Robbie McNarty to clear it down the ice. Yeah, and the crowd fired up here at the uh, early returns in this five and three kill. Hits it into the zone. Finds Fleming in front of the net, Mayer, he scores. Jordan Mayer on the power play is second of this series. And it's 2-0 Mississauga. You know, Peter, Dave Cameron made a lineup change here. And although what didn't affect this play, you can see Max Kitson is a little fired up. And I think he's a lot happier to be able to play with Mika Parton and in the five-on-five -five situation. Here he is on the power play working with Jordan Mayer. It gets to the front of the net on the pass by Kitson. And you can see Jordan Mayer just tapping it through the legs of Stager. He's in pretty good position. He's down covering it. It goes from Kitson to Fleming and then back in front to Mayer. And Mayer, maybe because he had so much on it, was able to slide it through the legs of Stager. Second power play goal here for the Majors. His seventh, and they now lead 2 0. The 19 year old from Kingston, Ontario, Jordan Mayer, finds the net as David Cameron's crew has two for two on the power play. And Mayer, a veteran player whose goal production was down this year, 31 last season in the regular campaign, just 19, but he's heating up at the most important time. Shug, another opportunity after a nice cross ice feed from Devontae Smith Pelly. And that's the one thing we talked about a patient game, but the game also has to be disciplined for the Owen Sound attack. This is a major's team that will try and outwork you throughout the course of 60 minutes and when they don't do that they'll frustrate you and try and go you into taking penalties and that's what we've seen here early on in this game Fleming and Kitson draw the assist line Mayer's seventh of the playoffs Devontae Smith Pelly and I hope Petre is okay it almost looked like the skate of Smith Pelly came up on him Sezikis another steal out of the reach of Chug. It's been all Mississauga here in the opening frame. Owen Sound trying to get its legs underneath them. This guy can change a game. Hishin off Dylan DeMello. DeMello and Kantner both plus 13 in the postseason coming into the night. Yeah, it's a nice mix. You have the young DeMello with the very experienced veteran Mark Canton. They too. The two of those guys have worked really well together in the back end for the major. DeMello, he snaps his stick. Could it lead to an opportunity? Helis with Brace going to the net, and that just missed. Cameron Brace, who has terrific speed. Owen Sounds number 11. Carrying on is Jordan Mayer. You can tell he's feeling it right now. And a little swing on Petri. Play continues. Up the middle, a breakaway chance. McNarty by himself. He scores. Robbie McNerney's 12th, and it's 2-1. A uh, great job in the transition. The Majors get caught up ice, and Owen Sound takes advantage of it. A beautiful pass here by Petgrave, and I love his patience. Watch how it starts from behind the net. Now, with 
the tire blown by Percy. It goes back up ice. McNarty has the middle of the ice open. Goes up Walker's side. And he's able to be sprung free on the breakaway and cut the lead in half. McNarty now 12 goals here in the Ontario Hockey League playoffs to take sole possession of the lead. His third of this championship series. And McNarty has Owen Sound right back in it. At 9.21, you know that Petgrave will draw an assist, and we've got more penalties. Oh, it's going to be a cross-check here. And by the sounds of the crowd, this one will go against Owen Sound. Oh, man, this building is about to bring the roof right off the joint. They are some kind of fired up here. They've still not registered the goal as of yet. Not sure why, but McNarty has indeed scored his 12th and his third in the last two games. He had both in the game one setback on Tuesday. Coincidental minors, by the way, and another penalty at least. One more as referees Holberg and Ferguson have their hands full. Yeah, they sure do. And Whatever stuff was absent in game one is not here. And now Max Keatson will go to the box for the majors. And I'll tell you what, Peter, you better start putting tiered seating in there or stadium seating in the box because it is getting jam-packed in there right now. Mark Reeds, his team enjoys its first power play. They've given up two power play goals. Looking for an equalizer. Stanish as they work four on three. Hishin and Jesse Blacker, he has four postseason goals. Hishin plays catch with Blacker. Hishin, Blacker again. Scores! Blacker shot, hit Casey Sezikis, and we're even at two. Well, there it is, the raucous Harry Lumley Bayshore Arena on fire. Playing catch here are Joey Hishin and Jesse Blacker. And you watch Zika's left side of your screen as he floats into the middle of the ice. You'll see the puck just go off the stick. This isn't a hard shot by Blacker whatsoever. But what it is, is a shot that makes its way to the goal. And as a defenseman, it's always a skill to have a little easier in a four on three situation. And I'm not so sure that Robbie McNarty didn't get a leg on it. But whatever happened, it surely touched something on the way in. Blacker right now will get credit for the goal as Owen Sound comes back to tie. It is being credited to Blacker. Looked like it went off the inside of the knee of the Mississauga captain. It's been a while since I've seen a start like this. Hard to wrap your head around. There's been no flow, but we've had four goals, a ton of power plays, and three power play goals. Not to mention a 2-0 deficit that's been erased by the home team. And here they come again. Smith Kelly held in at the line by Blacker. Just kept it on side. Canton. Good breakout pass to Jordan Mayer. He made it 2 nothing moments ago. Both Mark Reeds and Dave Cameron needed time to get their thoughts reset as well. And why? Because here we are, the game just 10 minutes into the first period, and we've seen three power play goals. It starts with Justin Shug as he escaped from the sideboards untouched, and then Jordan Mayer slides it along the ice to beat Scott Stager. How about this pass from Petgrave to McNarty? That would cut the lead in half. Owen Sound has since come back to score again. And we're tied at two. Three of the four goals, power play goals, one a four on three, one a five on three. And the circus continues here in Owen Sound. Black Roo tied it to Hishin, who assisted on it. Now Hishin to the net. Backhander! Anderson got a toe on it. And here's Shug in transition, working against Stanich. Shug puts on the brakes in a hurry. Shug is shot. Stager looked in behind him, but got enough to keep it out. Wilson is hurt. There'll be a penalty, and if you're Owen Sound, you hope like crazy that he's okay. Kind of fell awkwardly, I thought, Sam. Yeah, it looked like he got it in the midsection, and Casey Zizekas will make his way to the box. You'll see Wilson kind of hunched over. 
you would be too if this happened to you. There's Sezekis. Yeah, there's the blade of the stick comes up. And yes, Garrett Wilson will be singing like Michael Jackson before long. J.P. Anderson off of Hishin. He gets a little help from Stuart Percy in front of the net. As they attend to Garrett Wilson, another power play. Owen Sound, one for one. Petri to Hishin. Joey Hishin, the Colorado first rounder. Jeffrey Shemich, Petgrave a drive, and with McNarty to the front, Anderson finds it and hangs on. McNarty really working hard in front of the net to try and create traffic, but on this shot as it gets back to Petgrave, Anderson is able to get out, and he gets a view off to the side of McNarty, so he's able to see that shot cleanly. McNarty's on quite a roll. With that goal, he's extended his playoff point scoring streak, Sam, to seven games. And now with 12 goals leading the way for Owen Sound point wise and goal wise. Dave Cameron trying to make changes, but he doesn't have the last change, and the referees won't allow it. Shemitz. Intercepted by Percy. He's one of your steady Eddie guys for sure. Yeah, you gotta love him. He's been great all season long. Palmo into the zone with McNarty and Helis driving the net. To Shemich. Petgrave off of McNarty and nearly found the net. Frankly, everything he touches right now is a chance to go in. 105 to go in this Owen Sound power play. A rock is first period. Helis and Petgrave broken up by Durazio, a former member of the Owen Sound attack. He was a first round pick of theirs back in 06. Petgrave, he's a good skater. Enters the zone, puts on the brakes. Petgrave, that's tipped, and Anderson with a good save is hit a body. Petgrave doing it again with a good shot on goal, but earlier in the fray, it's Petgrave's shot with McNarty streaking in from the side. Has it go off of his shaft and then off the post? Oh, and Sound thought they had one. You see it go off the stick. It rattles the net, but only draws post. Anderson looking behind him and then reaches back to make sure that he's got the front of the net covered. Robbie McNarty that close to his second straight two goal game in this series. Stanish with traffic as Wilson back out there. That's good news for the attack. Stanish a hard shot and Anderson with that right handed catching glove. Well, you know what? I like what Owen Sound is doing here in the power play. There's not a whole lot of passing around and trying to be cute. It's about getting the puck back to the point, getting shots on goal, keeping the puck low, crashing the net thereafter. Owen Sound was the second best power play team during the regular season in the Ontario Hockey League. At nearly 24%, they've been just over 22 so far through 16 postseason affairs. Blacker, who's been a key to Burdnikoff, the one-timer, and reading it well was J.P. Anderson. To stop the 18-year-old Russian Roman Burdnikoff. Joey Hishin away from D'Souza. Runs into Canton. Blacker will keep it alive. Penalty to the Majors is over. Burdnikoff off the heel of his stick. And then he fans on a clearing attempt. Chris D'Souza enters the zone. Cross corner shoot in towards Sezikis. Fleming and Stewart. Percy a shot. That's tipped by Mayer. And created some fits as it came quickly. The boards here are like lightning. Yeah, a little faster. The, the rink's a little livelier here. The ice may be a little faster than what it is at the Hershey Center. Jay Gilbert, who's been a nice addition in a trade, came over from Plymouth. Number four, he's plus 10. Leads all attack players in that category entering the evening. Yeah, one of those defensemen that you just don't notice a whole lot, but you look at the numbers and say, oh yeah, I guess that guy's pretty good, and Gilbert's been that. Gilbert backhands it, hit Percy with it, and Fleming. A fifth round pick of Washington and a good outlet for Kitson. Maxim Kitson. So talented. 
Hits in a shot and Stager will hold that. We know this, Sam. They'll both play for it. And the last time we've seen this type of situation arise, you go back to 2007. It was Vancouver and Medicine Hat playing in the Western Hockey League Championship for the Edge Nose Cup. Medicine Hat won it in seven. Vancouver ends up winning the MasterCard Memorial Cup last year. So if you think these two teams are just playing and getting ready for the cup, you got another thing coming. Mississauga led early 2-0. McNarty and Blacker replied for Owen Sam. 24 seconds apart. Wise, some diligent work in deep. Back to the left point and David Parenti still looking for his first playoff point. Cramarosa in deep with Derek Schoenmakers on the four check. Durazio a blast. And Stager looked as sharp on that shot as any that he's faced in this opening frame. Here we are in game two. The majors won game one by a score of five two. The schedule looks like this. Friday night there will be in Mississauga, you can catch it on Rogers television. And then we're back here Sunday for game four. Should the series go beyond that, Rogers television will be carrying them all uh, with the conclusion uh, game seven, if necessary, on the 15th of May. Scott Stager, an injury plague regular season, only performed in 14 games. And it's taken over here in the playoffs. A three on two develops. Hish and a rolling puck, plenty on it. And in great position was J.P. Anderson. Yeah, Peter, you talk about Scott Stager and you look at this breeze of crowd. Uh, Scott Stager getting the chance to play in the regular season in just 14 games. Michael Zador acquired in the trade from Oshawa in case Stager wasn't able to come back. And Jordan Bennington pretty much carried the load and played the most regular season game. He started in the playoffs, Zador came in and relief in the London series and then Stager was able to get back in the Plymouth series and has taken over the top spot as the number one guy. Garrett Wilson knocked off the puck by Canton and Petgrave in his own zone to retrieve it for Shemitz. Wilson he'll shoot it in. DeMello slides it to Riley Brace off the glass and out and Fleck will shoot it in. Demich takes a solid jolt, made a good play. Here's Wilson again with Hishin. Top two forwards on this attack side. And the majors were in good position defensively to prevent the dynamic duo from getting anything done, but they remain out there. Hishin versus Fleming. Fleming was a league high plus 60 during the regular campaign. And he is no fun to play against. He may not be the biggest guy in the world, but he'll let you know he's there each and every shift. Percy, he was just plus 50. Fleming to center, and he'll shoot it in. Blacker. Kept ahead to Liam Healis on right wing with McNardi again. Fleming, there's a good, solid play to clear it out. As Cutting fanned, and Keevan Cutting now on a second drive backhands it deep. This game in this building gets on you in a hurry, doesn't it? It sure does, especially with how lively the boards are. Jared Maidens, the young forward. Number seven out there with Nardi and Helis. Jordan Mayer with Mika Partman. And Stager no rebound on the Mayer long wrist shot. Dave Cameron making a lineup change as well for the Majors as Mika Partnan draws back into the lineup. And Peter, I thought he was playing really well on a line with Mayer and Kitson. And about game three of that Niagara series, Corey Durrell was brought in. And as a result of that, Partnan drew out of the lineup. But here he is back at least starting the game with his old linemates of Mayer and Kitson. Devante Smith Kelly had two in the series opener. Parente block backhand shugging. I think Stager got a piece of it. Excellent save, maybe the best of the game by Stager off Shug, who opened the scoring a minute 25 in. Garrett Wilson not out. Durazio keeps it. Smith Kelly, that's broken up. And here's Wilson, the lanky winger. 
brought in on the offside. And now Carrenti having some words with Joey Hishon. Oh yeah, Hishon will let you know he's out there too. He likes to talk and that's not always well taken by everyone, but it happens all the time. And just when you thought Skager threw that left pad out there, I think it might have hit the skate of Matt Stanish in front of the net. There's a pretty good indication that right skate heel kicks that puck wide, but Stager's still in a good position. It would have hit his pad had it got by Stan. A little help from his friends. That had a chance. Petgrave on the shoot-in. Ken reverses neatly to Dylan DeMello. Up the middle to Joe Cramarosa. Cramarosa with his fine speed races in to get to the puck first to Jamie Wise, a weak backhander, and that's no trouble for Cramarosa. Peter, so often we talk about offense generated from what you do in the defensive zone. Here's a great D to D pass, a nice delay there by Dylan DeMello. Immediately it gets up ice with that great pass to Cramarosa, and look at how quickly the majors are able to go from their own zone into the offensive zone. I can understand why you like this guy. Oh yeah, he's fantastic. He's got good size, he's tough, ranked 63rd as far as central scouting is concerned. And because he plays, you know, third and fourth line minutes, you don't always hear about him. But the scouts have uh, really paid close attention to Cramarosa. He'll be a nice pick for somebody come June. Terrific speed as two playoff goals. McNardi, did he get a stick on that? No, so icing will be the call in a wild penalty filled power play driven first period. Lewis and McNarty uh, have both been involved in this game so far and it's that depth that you talk about Owen Sound and their ability to throw guys out there with three lines that can really score. This second line has done a nice job all season long. Lewis and McNarty anchoring that second unit. Lewis has 10 points in the playoffs to Jared Maidens and behind the play Riley Brace reaching to his chin or his nose or both and you know what he's trying to sell yeah this game has had its fair share of filth early on there's no question about it and here it is behind the play he's already trying to protect himself and in doing so delivers the old cross chop right into the grill of brace and Mississauga's two for three on the power play. And McNarty takes a seat. Wilson backhands it. Makes its way out to center. Ken paired on the power play. Percy at Sezikis, Devontae Smith, Pelly, and Shug up front. Casey Sezikis, watched closely by Matt Stanek. Sezikis with it again. He'll come to the front trying to jam it by Stager, who kept it out. So often he plays where he will not be denied. He just has that great will to accomplish whatever task he's doing. Sezikis almost did it again there. Sezikis, three points in game one, none tonight. Not without plenty of opportunity, though, as he hooks up Percy, and it's kicked out into the mesh by Scott Stager. Both goalies have been fairly busy here in this opening frame. Shots on goal 16 to 10 in favor of Mississauga. Sezikis will get a well-deserved rest. He was just brilliant in game one. I mean, he did everything, Peter. Um, on the back track, the ability to draw a penalty shot, a goal, a couple of assists. Carazio, the power play with 106 left in it. Carazio in close quarters, pressured by Cameron Brace. Fleming a shot high in the air. It's gloved down. Carazio to Fleming, who has an assist in the game. Brett Fleming into the final minute of this opening frame. Fleming, Carazio. Off the stick of Jay Gilbert. Into it with Maxim Kitson. And Carazio chops at it. Gilbert, another attempt to clear, and there's a fine piece of hustle from recently turned 18-year-old forward Cameron Briggs. Now using that good speed though, the initial acceleration to be able to dive and clear that puck away. Kitson can't transfer from skate to stick. And Jesse Blackrew tied this game in a power play. Backhands it down the ice. Hishon will get to it first shorthanded. Hishon. 
with Wilson. They play in every situation. And especially dangerous here while a man down. You've got Wilson with that long reach, and you've got Hishin with a good quick stick. McNardi intercepts out of the penalty box. Elected to pass as the buzzer goes. A 2-2 tie after 20 in game two of this Rogers OHL Championship Series. I don't know what to say. That was quite the first period. It had a little bit of everything. But we still got 40 to go. Maybe more. They're playing for the J. Ross Robertson Cup. Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie, president of the Onsound Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our own Sound Attack Challenge sponsors. Their contributions make Rotary projects a reality. Hi, I'm Barb Klumpus. I'm the mayor of the municipality of Meaford. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Rogers TV on their quality community programming. And I'd like to invite you as viewers to watch the proceedings of the Council of the Municipality of Meaford every Tuesday afternoon at 4 o'clock. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to RogersTV.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers. Welcome back to Rogers TV special presentation of Game 2 of the 2011 Ontario Hockey League Championship between the Owen Sound Attack and the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. I'm Annie Pava, along with Mark McKelvey for this special presentation. And after the first period of Game 2, Mark, uh, it was a wild opening period with four goals in that first. Very uh interesting first period to say the least we talked about it off the top the fact that Owen Sound was want to, going to want to use home ice advantage and to uh come in firing because again after game one you could say Owen Sound didn't present their best game a little sluggish and Mississauga jumped on them and here in game number two Mississauga was ready to go scoring just over a minute into the game and really uh quieting down the base shore but Owen Sound found their footing as that period went on, Manny, and were able to get things all squared at two. Yeah, Mississauga out shooting Owen Sound 17 to 10 in that first period. And as you saw, it didn't take them very long. Scoring on the power play, just a minute 25 into that first period. Mark, when a team can generate a power play in the first minute of the hockey game, that certainly turns a game in your favor. And it certainly does. Being able to, to capitalize on those opportunities is huge. And Mississauga all season long, tons of weapons for the man advantage. It was Justin Shug that opens the scoring with his sixth of the postseason. And if you're on sound and head coach Mark Reed, you imagine was trying to keep everyone calm, not let this one slip away. I thought Owen Sound, when you look back on that, uh, first period, Manny, they might have been maybe a little nervous just playing in front of the Bayshore, which was absolutely rocking. Everyone knows that. And I think one player we definitely want to talk about who was really trying to turn the tide when things weren't looking good for Owen Sound in the early going was Andrew Shaw. He was trying to spark things. But of course, that's actually going to end up backfiring a little bit as the major score on the power play for an instigator uh, stretching their lead to 2 nothing. Yeah, Andrew Shaw uh, was in a bit of a tussle with Rob Flick. And uh, it was a very good fight, as you saw in that first period, but it led to a power play goal by Jordan Mayers, his seventh of the postseason. But I thought Owen Sound, 
after that goal, regrouped. Uh, even though Shaw was in the box still for the the instigator and the misconduct that gets handed after the fight, it seemed that the bench responded well. And, and Owen Sound said, not in our house is this going to happen. Yeah, you're right about that. And that's where veteran presence really comes in. And Robbie McNardi had an incredible postseason back in 2011. And he was able to get Owen Sound on the board near the midway point of that first period. And I think that really calmed a lot of things. And then Owen Sound didn't waste any time coming right back to tie it. Jesse Blacker scoring on the power play. Talk about veteran uh, experience. Jesse Blacker, of course, had that experience from his time in Windsor. And he brought a lot of that to Owen Sound, which I think was very significant in this run. So in that first intermission of game two back in 2011, the fans in the Bay Shore were excited. They were they were happy to see the team rally from a 2 nothing deficit. They were even after 20 minutes. But as you will see, and as some of you may remember, that wouldn't come to play for the remainder of the game. As uh, Mississauga sort of took control of the game in that second period. As we continue with game two of this special presentation of the 2011 OHL Championship on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie, president of the Onsound Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our own Sound Attack Challenge sponsors. Their contributions make Rotary projects a reality. Looking to get your sports fix? Join our panel each week for RTV Sports Wrap. As we dive into sports topics with in-depth discussion, predictions, and opinions. Local, provincial, national, world sports. We cover it all. Everything you want to know that is happening in the world of sports. Sports and more sports. It's all right here on RTV Sports Wrap, only on Rogers TV. I joined because I wanted to help others. To be a part of something bigger. To show my kids what's important. I joined to make my community stronger. To make a difference in someone's life. To acknowledge that our freedoms come at a cost. I joined to honor my mom. My grandpa. My neighbor. Everyone who served. Who are serving still. I joined. I joined. I joined the Legion. We're doing the same thing my family's been doing for hundreds of years. We're going to lose the farm. We're going to the Supreme Court. If you win, no farmer could ever be sued for saving his seeds again. The target has superhuman abilities. I think it's an invitation to fight for something known as Mortal Kombat. Kill them. Hi, I'm David Sherman, host of Politically Speaking. Join me for my next show when my guests will be the Blue Water District Roman Catholic School Board on Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. And both teams showing their scoring depth in the opening frame. Yeah, I think they're so evenly matched and it speaks to the depth of each side. When you look at Mississauga, four lines that can score according to Marty Williamson, whose Niagara Ice Dogs were beat out by the majors, and Mark Reed's team, much the same. Nine players with 10 or more points. They've played a couple more games than Dave Cameron's team. But still, that depth up and down the lineup for both of these Ontario Hockey League finalists. In the regular season, they were the number one and number two scoring teams. Mississauga one, Jesse Blacker and company number two. In the case of Mark Canton and friends, 520 goal scores plus. And for Owen Sound, seven players in their lineup in the regular season with 20 or more goals. We'll see if there's a little more discipline in period two. Joey Hishin, his shot blocked up by Casey Sizikis. Ferdinikoff. Wilson and Hishin, the number one trio for Owen Sound to begin against the top line for the majors in Sezekis, Smith Pelly, and Justin Shug. 
Fleming. Brett Fleming off the boards to Devontae Smith. Kelly, he lost the handle. And Percy, an opportunity to move it out and does so on right wing. Devontae Smith Pelly, the Anaheim second rounder, kicked, scored right onto the stick of Shug. He has his second of the night, and it's 3 2 Mississauga. The rebound control is such a, such a huge issue, and although the timing of the shot fools Stager, he still has to be, ever, be able to better control this rebound. This looks like it's going to be a harder shot than it is, but when it comes in, you can see Stager already starting to react, and so at the last second and on the second attempt, he has to readjust, and by readjusting, he simply kicks that right pad out. Justin Shug there on the doorstep to bang it home. Now, Shug has to be better covered in front of the net as well. Sam, it looked like Blacker, the defenseman who was covering Shug, expected the puck to be redirected in the corner and backed off of Shug and left him all by himself. And you can't take those things for granted. And you saw the first uh, whiff shot. That forced the initial reaction from Stager. And then he was kind of left to his own reactionary defenses thereafter. Justin Shug scored 125 into the first. He scored 42 seconds into period two, his second of the night, from Devontae smith Pelly and Stuart Percy. Now let's get another look at it, Peter. You see the original shot from smith Pelly misses. Stager's already reacted. Second shot goes, and now he has to make that reactionary save. Blacker skates right by Justin Chubb. A, getting ready to think that, of course, that the puck's going to go into the corner and he can transition out. But when you're in that spot, you really have to look after your own zone first. And don't assume anything. And, of course, as soon as you leave Chubb all alone, pretty good chance he's going to bury it. Mike Halmo celebrating his 20th birthday today, drives the net. Off the faceoff and the save and some more pushing and shoving, as was the case after almost every whistle in period one. Yeah, that's for sure. The, the no love loss theme really starting to uh, take shape and gain momentum here in game number two. Almo so far in these playoffs, a very respectable 13 points for the now 20 year old from Waterloo, Ontario. One of those 10 guys with 10 or more. Yeah, heart and soul guy as well. Stick change for David Carrente. The reason for the short delay in play. 118 in. And Owen Sound finds themselves trailing one more time. Including the regular season. When these teams played twice. Mississauga, a perfect 3-0 against the attack. Liam Helis with Jared Maidens and Robbie McNardy. McNardy just missed on a wonderful pass from Helis. He put it shot right out of the camp. Right on his tape. And McNardy hasn't missed much lately. Leads the OHL playoffs in goals with his 12th here tonight. Hartman back out with Kitson and Mayer. They've supplied a goal for Dave Cameron's majors. Mayer has it and has the puck. Off Jay Gilbert right in front of the net. And Helis was involved away from the puck, and the fans didn't like that. Mika Parton off his skate and one-handed in by Keevan Cutting. Mark Canton, uh, Michael Durazio. Parton takes a hit to make the play. Halmo takes over, trying to gather speed, runs into Derek Schoenmakers. This energy line that Dave Cameron applies. All pretty good wheels, wise. Schoenmakers along with the best skater of the bunch, Cramarosa, Helmo Crunch Schoenmakers. Cramarosa fears that speed on display again as he's robbed by Scott Stager. Oh, big hit thrown in the neutral zone as Mike Homo gets involved with Schoenmakers, but as a result of that, it's Cramarosa who was able to pick up that loose puck. There's the big hit, and here's the chance that results thereafter. Cramarosa picks it up. He goes to the backhand here, but Stager follows him over, makes a good left pad save. The birthday boy with a big hit, and he has Schoenmakers in some difficulty. The tough physical customer is Schoenmaker, so you had to rattle him pretty good to get him peeled over an event like that. D'Souza with Riley Brace and Rob Fleck. 
These guys have a little sandpaper too. So one thing about this majors team, they can kind of hit you with everything. That's how you win 53 during the regular season and go 13 and one in the playoffs. Way to run for the majors. Ken keeps it alive and Petrave who recorded a first period assist tries to spring Helis this time somewhat like when he sent McNardi in on that first period breakaway. Jared to Helis with McNardi pulled it to the middle and then had to roll off his stick. On play good poise by Brace didn't panic there makes a good outlet pass before it's turned over. Petrave with a cross corner shoot it. McNardi in deep on the four check. He's playing like a man possessed. He's playing like a 20 year old who's only had two playoff games coming into this season. Wilson ties up his man. Flick who manages to shovel it into the zone. Justin Shug with his second of the game early as the majors in front 3 2. But here's Hishin. Terrific cut to his knees and still managed a pretty good opportunity. Uh, he is gifted is Joey Hishin with the stick. His hands are fantastic. He's so wildly creative and he shows that creativity. Cross ice cut, then he wants to flip it over the stick of the defense and even on the ice still gets a pretty good shot away, forcing Anderson to make the pad save. Hishin with an assist in that opening period, the 17th overall pick in the most recent NHL draft. Wins a draw cleanly and Stanish whistled it well wide of the target. Smith Pelly around his man off the crossbar. Devontae Smith Pelly with a nice move and then rings one off the iron. Well, it starts off the draw, Peter. It's one cleanly by Hish and it goes back to Stanish. His shot goes wide, but Stanish wants to follow the puck. Wide shot. He goes to follow the puck. Now, Burdnikov has to step over. Does a pretty good job, but he gets deked out. You either have to get the man of the puck in that situation, otherwise, the two on one's created. And you know Smith Pelly can get it to the net in short order. Blacker tied the game at two on the power play in the first, and this pass attempt turns into an icing call. Game number one of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League final. St. John has gone ahead of Gatineau 2-1 in the third. Just a minute left at Harbor Station. I'll give the Olympique a lot of credit after taking the Quebec Rampards and winning in seven games, having to come right back to go into a very tough and probably raucous Harbor Station against the number one team in the Canadian Hockey League for a good portion of the year. Stripped, shug for a third of the night, but missed. Not only does he have two, he's had a ton of time for both and nearly a third. Kishin as Mark Reeds continues to go number one line against number one line. Blacker carries in, and Owen Sound will clear the zone. Percy off Smith Pelly to the line, kicked at by Blacker. Shug has to wait. Sezikis takes quite a slash from Hishin, and Hishin's going to pay the price. Oh, man. This was nasty. And Sezikis and Hishin. Sezikis laid a pretty good hit on Hishin. Hishin didn't like it and turned around and administered the two-hander right in the middle of the ice to Sezikis. Oh, man. And you can see the Majors captain swinging around. Here's the hit right here. Hishin didn't like it. When he gets up, oh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan right in the leg. Ouch. He didn't like the fact that Sezikis came up high on him a little bit and responded. It would take a lot to knock that guy out of the game. Oh, yeah. Like a broken leg. Maybe. Fifth power play try for the Majors. They're two for four. And lead this best of seven affair one game to nothing. Game three back at the Hershey Center tomorrow. And then we'll have game four for you. 4.30 Eastern time Sunday afternoon. Durazio away from Robbie McNarty. Flick banks it off the boards. Gilbert trying to clear the zone. Hits Flick in the back. Gets caught up in his equipment. And Shaw is punishing him. And then he goes to the dasher and literally throws it out of the zone. Knuckleball by Shaw. He's excited to be back on the ice. He served a 10 in the first. Tim Wakefield would have been proud of that offering. Flick. 
Shaw, a menace on this penalty kill, but still 114 left in it. Fleming to Jordan Mayer. He has a power play goal. Slides it neatly for Kitson. Kitson a blast! Man alive, did he get a lot in that snapshot? Maxim Kitson. Fleck on the cycle for Mayer again. Mayer hits Gilbert with that pass attempt. Dorazio, top of the circle. Stager saw it late, but it went wide. Fleming, good feed. Kitson for Fleck. They just failed to make the connection, and Helis can't get it out. Fleming gloved it to himself, so it's ruled okay. Fleck, a hard wrister. Loose in front, scores. Jordan Mayer has his second of the night, and it's 4-2. Well, Dave Cameron started this line with Mika Parton and, uh, and his old line mates, Kitson and Mayer. But this has all been changed up. It's Mayer and Kitson now with Robert Flick. And this line has a lot of different elements to it. Good job in the backtrack by Mayer. Pucks kept in at the line. And from there, Flick will get it towards the front of the net. Good shot on goal. And look at the collapse. All three forwards for the majors down on it. When that puck comes loose on a nice self-pass from Fleming to himself, It'll be right there on the doorstep for Mayer to bang it home. Mayer's second power play of the game is eighth of the postseason. And Owen Sound looking for that glove, closed glove on the play, and they were livid at the end of that fray once the goal had gone in the net. They might have had a beat. He did have a beat. That was a self-pass, closed glove in the puck. A third power play goal in the game for Mississauga. And for the second time in the contest, they find themselves in front of the home side by a pair. The way chances have come in this game, this baby's a long way from being over. Maidens carries in, but it's offside. And Brett Fleming with some trickery here. But you'll see why Owen Sound was so mad after that fourth goal. Watch Fleming, top left corner of your screen. Has the puck in his glove, waits, 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 flips it up to himself. And now the Majors are able to continue to go down and score the goal. Here's another look at it. Closes the glove on it, flips it up to himself. As it lands, he picks it back up, and the Majors go to work. That's why Owen Sound was so mad once that goal had gone into the net. And after those two looks, especially the last. You got a good beef there. Forget about a good beef. The beef. Great beef. Wilson with Hishin and Burdnikov. Hishin for Burdnikov, tied up by Percy, and then Wilson knocked Percy down as Shug comes back. Two already in the game. Upended by Blacker, and Blacker deals with Sezikis, who's okay after the slash from Hishin. Well, it's official in St. John at Harbor Station. The St. John Seadocks win it 2-1. to one. Former Brandon Wheat King goaltender Jacob Desairs, the winning goalie. Dupre, Simone Dupre with a game winner in that one for St. John. So Gerard Gallant and his team up 1-0 over Gatineau. In the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League President's Cup Final. Simone Dupre, a Pittsburgh draft pick and a member of Canada's national junior team. Durazio blocked in front by Cutting. Fleck an opportunity. That didn't find its way through either. Gilbert. Parenti able to keep it in. As the Majors, as they did in game number one when they scored three in the second period, taking this frame over. Garazio, Rister, that goes off Andrew Shaw. Corrente, and Stager got a pat on it. Halmo waits for help. Shaw carries on. Shaw into the zone, nice cut. And a recovery by Corrente as Halmo with a stiff shoulder for Garazio. Garazio stunk. Not surprised. Shemich. To Petgrave and he overskates it. Petgrave with a first period assist, just able to find its way past both Mayer and Kitson, and they have been terrific for the Majors. Kitson on the forecheck. Halmo up the middle now with Helis. 
just on inside. Kenton steers it, looking for a change. His brace before he heads off. Kept it in and partnered, and brace still after one another. Liam Helis, he takes a jab from Kitson. And things uh, got ugly early in this game, and then they continue to get that way here as we reach the midway mark of period number two. We saw Flick and Shaw involved in a strap earlier in this game. Flick exacting a little revenge, Shaw not wanting to let go. And these two hockey clubs have uh, thrown that all game one niceties aside here in this game. Wise strips his man and looks for the top shelf and just missed. Fleming off the stick. Will it go out of the zone? No. Cramarosa able to get to it. Boy, is that guy growing on me with every shift. Cramarosa, a great chance and a pad save by Stager. Sam Owentown's had a lot of trouble clearing pucks from the front of their net. You know, and really not managing the puck very well in their own zone, especially in this period. And that's uh, pretty indicative of what happened in game one. Another example here. Fleming, two assists already in the game. Through the screen, wanted Shug. Smith Pelly lets it go to Canton. As the majors continue to assert themselves. There's a good defensive zone play by Helis and immediately stripped by Sezikis. Casey Sezikis and Stager might have got a piece. Good backtrack by Sezikis. Never stops working. Smith Pelly for Sezikis. Gilbert cut that off. And Maidens finally clears it out. Dylan DeMello to Devontae Smith Pelly. Protects it beautifully. Sharp angle shot goes wide of the target. That puck got as far as the majors line. It was a D to D pass and right back the other way against Owen Sound. And Owen Sound relieves the pressure. Casey Sezikis enjoying another terrific outing. He is our hardest working player of the game. Brought to you by Dickies, the official workwear partner of the Ontario League, the Western Hockey League, and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. And it's pretty easy to see why, Peter. Again, Good positioning here in the defensive zone. Able to come back and help out. How about this in the backtrack? Creates a turnover. He can create good scoring chances as well. Backtrack. You're not going to get a free pass out of your own zone. He has discovered that quite quickly. And Casey Sezikis has been, again, one of the best players on the ice for either team. 24-13. Now the shot's in favor of the majors. They've had a wide edge here in the second period. 7-3, in fact. Now make it 8 as that registers as well off the faceoff. Flick to take the draw. The Chicago pick out there with D'Souza and Brace. Shaw, Halmo, and Cameron Brace. Here's Brace who can wheel and deal. Collects it. Blocked. Shaw back to the line and met Petgrave. Petgrave through a screen. Nearly surprised Anderson. The high riser. And Shemich shall go back for it. Shemich, a draft pick of the Tampa Bay Lightning in the fourth round. Former member of Canada's World Under-18 team. Played in that event last year. Just a lot of time with a broken arm this year, but he has been a welcome addition on the blue line for Mark Reed. Cameron Brace to Andrew Shaw. Tried to drop it off, does so. Halmo was tied up. Brace again. Backhander loose in the crease. A penalty upcoming to the majors as they continue to whack away at it around J.P. Anderson. Now there's Brace getting involved once again. Just seems to give you that solid effort night in and night out for the Owen Sound attack. And penalty is about to be called. See the puck go from Shaw to Halmo. Now, nice job here by Halmo just to tip it down to Brace. Good move to get Corrente to bite, and there it is on the doorstep for Shaw. JP Anderson good down low. Shaw just can't get any stick on it. You can see him trying to poke it ahead there, do something with the shaft, anything in the glove, just not enough leverage to stick too long and on the outside of the post. Just couldn't get it done, but at the very least, he was at least able to draw that penalty. Owen Sound to the power play now. They have a power play goal in this game. They're one for two. The goal by Blacker. 
tied it on a power play at two in the first. Hartman will go for the cross check and big power play here for Owen Sound. Then all Mississauga in this second period. Wilson, great rink wide pass to Blacker with Hishon. Stanish keeps it in, runs into Sezikis, and Sezikis wins another battle. Well, the New York Islanders haven't signed him yet. I'm not sure what they're waiting for. Nice second bounce. Stanish to Blacker. Blacker blasts it in on the ring towards Hishon. Percy, another chance, finds the opening. Dave Cameron changes his penalty killers. Stanish leads the power play breakup. Blacker off the skate of Hishon, and that forces Blacker back again. Stanish on the ring towards Roman Burdnikov. And Burdnikov just can't seem to get going in this game. Yeah, when you dump the puck in like that on that hard ring, you have the defender with his back to the play. You have to get in hard on that puck. Highly skilled, but you can tell sometimes he has some difficulty being involved as much as you'd like. Halmo, that's no issue for this guy. Halmo leaves it for Petgrave and knocked away from him. And I don't have to tell you who by. Shot and offside, it's the call at the line. Yeah, really tough for Owen Sound just to gain any momentum here with that extra man. Just 21 seconds left in the Mika Parton and penalty. Shaw with a couple of assists in that first game. Petgrave, you talked about his game in the clincher against Windsor to win the Western Conference Championship. Three goals and an assist in the 10-4 wins. Someone was finally able to knock off the Windsor Spitfires after they'd won a record 10 playoff series in a row. Yeah, they were kind of like Dawn of the Dead, the zombies that you couldn't kill. They just wouldn't go away, the Windsor Spitfires, but Owen Sound finally uh, able to knock them off. And congratulations to Warren Reichel and company. What a run it has been. Just that close to making it to yet another cup. And Mark Reed's excited about the Memorial Cup, but he'd sure like his team to turn it up here in game two. Well, still plenty of time left. A lot of stick to it this is going to be required, but I think this club learned something in game one. And, and Robin McNardi put it best. He said, listen, Mississauga wants to work until you lose your will to work. And in order to beat this hockey club, it's going to require a 60-minute disciplined and patient effort. 10 seconds to go in the Owen Sound power play. We'll see if they can get one last crack. Maidens, one last crack, just missed. Shemich whistled it and kicked away by J.P. Anderson. The penalty is over. McNarty was slow to get back to his feet. Now he's lost his helmet, so he will make his way to the bench. Couple of good late power play opportunities for Owen Sound. Shemitz with the best. Mayer, along with Kitson, creating havoc. Mayer has two goals in the game. D'Souza off the bench, Kitson on the rebound, and Stager with a big save. Look at uh, Tom Kanako of the Windsor Spitfires, along with Alexander Koklachev. Those guys went through a bit of a dip in the latter part of the regular season, but they came to play in the playoffs. Robbie McNarty with his 19 points tied with Ryan Ellis. How about Christian Thomas? He hasn't played in the world. Two rounds back. And Garrett Wilson rounding out the group with 18 points. Wilson, 18 points as we showed you. Nine goals. 40 during the regular season to lead the way in that category for Owen Sound. They'd love him to get on track here and Period two with his team down by two in the game and by one in the series. Game two of the Rogers OHL Championship Series. And right now, the team that will host the MasterCard Memorial Cup in the driver's seat. Dylan DeMello banks it off the boards to Riley Brace. Brace and DeMello exchange. Slides it for Kent. 
Canton again just trying to use those lively end boards here at the Harry Lumley Bayshore Center. DeMello can't keep it in, pressured by Halmo and a nice sweeping recovery by the Majors number two. Michael Halmo backhands it deep. Andrew Shaw and Cameron Brace with him. And Canton with a steady play to slide it ahead to Devontae smith Pelly, Sezikis and Shug again. Good stick by Stanich. Active right there to break it up. Halmo for Cameron Brace. And Devontae smith Pelly shows you he knows what to do at that end. Fleming and Sezikis. They didn't like that call at the Mississauga bench. You don't have to wait long for more great Ontario Hockey League Championship Series action. We'll be right back here on the shores of Georgian Bay Sunday afternoon. Happy Mother's Day for game number four. Oh, and he's giving it to the linesman as Dave Cameron did not like that offside call one bit. Happened right in front of him. He's not shy on intensity in game no, I wouldn't say that. Terrific coach. Stanish to Garrett Wilson. Backhands it in. Back out with Hishin and Burdnikov. Sammy, you surprised a little bit that Mark Reeds hasn't gone in a different way with this matchup at all. Yeah, it hasn't worked to this point, but I think it's also a way for Mark Reeds to say, hey, listen, you know, in order for our top guys to be our top guys, we're going to give them the challenge of playing against the best. And to this point, they haven't quite risen there. But this continued matchup may, at some point, turn the light on. Blacker. Now Suzekis and his trio about to make a change. Wilson still out there with Hishin and Burtnikov. Roman Burtnikov can't handle it cleanly. Runs into Jamie Wise. Matt Stanish flips it high. Knocked down by Fleming. Brett Fleming, he'll take a solid hit from Hitchin. And he'll get back up. Don't worry about Fleming, he is one tough customer. Garrett Wilson into the zone. Wilson, the Florida pick with a good wrister. Into the midsection of Anderson. Cutting now, rips it into the zone. Wilson, nearly too many men, and you know what? Not nearly, it is. And Hishin is some kind of hot as he has words with referee Scott Holberg. And Keevan Cutting just fires this puck in, but it happens on a line change as well. You see the puck go up in the air, the right side of your screen. And Hishin comes off the bench, delivers the blow to Fleming. But unfortunate here for the home side as Fleming was knocked to the ice shortly thereafter. No one sound called for too many men. Coming over to serve it will be youngster Jamel Smith, who I don't think has seen a regular shift in the game, maybe one. Yeah, he's been on once, but he's got good speed, Pete, so if he gets a chance, you know, when that situation arises out of the box, he'll be a guy that can take it to the net. And the power play has been a big story of this game, too. The majors are three out of five. Fleming with Durazio on the back end to begin. Kitson, Mayer who has two power play goals and Fleck up front. Mayer steals. Jordan Mayer thought about cutting to the net then went in behind it. Kitson is hauled down by Shaw who can't clear. Maxim Kitson to Fleming. Durazio and Jordan Mayer again. Mayer for three, stops Stager, the loose puck. And Stager gobbles it up. Mayer playing in this game like the former first round pick. He was a few years back. And really, really comfortable here, especially playing with Max Kitson. And big Rob Flick in front of the net. Good move on the delay by Mayer to get it to the front of the net. Stager gives up the rebound and then it has to come right back at him. Jordan Mayer, as we talked earlier in the show, dropped off from 31 to 19 in the regular season. But here he is in his 15th playoff game with eight. Two more this evening. Chug has two as well. Smith Pelly, Stanish, his stick in the road to break that up. 
power play with a ton of confidence right now. Percy in deep, knocks his man down. Stanish an opportunity to clear. And Canton just can't squeeze it at the line. Stuart Percy. Rated number 51 by NHL Central Scouting in the most recent rankings of North American skaters. And you know, he has caught the eye of plenty of scouts, and that ranking might be a little low in terms of where I think he's going to go. Percy was terrific in the top prospects game in Toronto. Sizikas into the final minute on this power play. Canton has it go by him and out to the neutral zone. Canton to Sizikas. Tips it in, and Petgrave can't clear it by Sizikas. Smith Pelly to Shug. He'll turn and twist. Penalty is over. As Smith out onto the ice. Dylan DeMello in front off the stick of Devante Smith Pelly. When this guy protects it, it's hard to take it away from him. Yeah, he's got man strength. Parenti upended and brace. One bench didn't like an offside call. Now the other bench doesn't like an offside call. Part of that all has to do with the flow of this game. We've seen so many whistles in the hockey game. It's been tough for players really to kind of find their stride. And although they may or may not be offside, they're close enough in the situation, kind of like that bang bang play at first base where you see so many of them in one game. Mark Reeds. His team fell behind 2-0, rallied to tie in the first. And now we're 12 seconds away from entering the third with a two-goal deficit. And a late penalty by veteran defenseman, or is it going to Canton? Both of them. The double down. Shaw is going to go two. And again, not very popular in this building. And Canton and Shaw get caught up with one another behind the play. And it was Shaw who goes down. And Canton who gets pegged for hauling him down. There it is, top right part of your screen. Shaw with a terrific playoff so far. Eight points in his last three games coming in to tonight. And sits down with Mark Canton. Canton about to play Sam in his third MasterCard Memorial Cup because he participated in 2008 with the Belleville Bulls. Last year, of course, on that championship winning team of the Windsor Spitfires. 4-2, J.P. Anderson and the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors lead after 40 minutes. Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie, president of the Onsan Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our own sound attack challenge sponsors. Their contributions make rotary projects a reality. Sometimes, for a wish to come true, it takes a kingdom because together we're stronger. Tied tight, united we stand in honor of one child's wish to fuel the fire that will grant many more. Join the kingdom. Gentlemen. We can work together. This world is not yet ready. I can feel it happening. We don't want more violence. Welcome to the afterlife. Congratulations, gentlemen. I'm Barb, and this is Star. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years since the Owen Sound attack shocked the junior hockey world by winning the Ontario Hockey League Championship. But get ready to relive that moment on Rogers TV. Join me, Manny Pava, as I host a special edition of Attack Wrap with members of that 2011 championship team. It will air after the rebroadcast of all seven games of the 2011 OHL final from May 9th to 15th. A province-wide stay-at-home order is currently in effect. Limit trips outside the home. 
remain in your local community and work from home if you are able. Visit the province's website for more information. Welcome back to Rogers TV special presentation of game two of the Ontario Hockey League Championship between the Owen Sound Attack and the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. We are in the second intermission of game two of that OHL final. My name is Manny Pava, along with Mark McKelvey as we recap that second period of game two. And even though Owen Sound rallied to even the game at two after the first period, it was Mississauga using that early game plan in period number two, just as they did in period number one, to take control of that period mark. Yeah, it certainly were. And that was the one thing about this majors team. They could really come out of the gate flying, and they do that in the second period. They really take control of this game. And from the perspective of an Owen Sound attack fan, and from the perspective of the Owen Sound attack bench, they really had to uh, find themselves on their heels at times in games one and two. But it was specifically those second periods for the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors where they were really able to take control in both of those games. And that's what you just saw here in game number two as they're going to strike twice. But it was that goal early in the frame that I think when you look at the attack, Manny, they probably had to be feeling pretty good coming up that second period. They weathered the storm early. They got things tied up in the first. But the Majors... They were sticking to their game plan. And this was a very balanced attack team of the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. Maybe not considering who scored the goals as it was Shug and Mayer again, but there were not a lot of holes on this Mississauga St. Michael's Majors team. They could throw four lines at you very solid from the goal tending position out. And Owen Sound was finding that out early in the series. Shug scored 42 seconds into that period, uh, really ending any momentum that Owen Sound had after that first period. Mayer scoring on the power play at 649 as Mississauga outshot Owen Sound again, 11-8 in that second period. Let's talk about Justin Shug for a minute, Mark, because he came over from a Windsor Spitfire team that had just won the Memorial Cup, not once, but twice. And he certainly knows or at, at least he did in 2011, what it took to win. And he was playing his part for the Mississauga St. Mike's Majors. Yeah, he definitely was. Think about this. When Shug's OHL career came to an end, he had played in 61 postseason games. That's not also including some Memorial Cup appearances. There was a player that Mississauga, when you are hosting the Memorial Cup, you're going to do what you have to do to bolster your lineup. But when you can actually take a player that's got that experience, got that championship pedigree, and plug him in, and Justin Shug was certainly making uh, his presence known. We talked a little bit about what Owen Sound got from a Jesse Blacker and his experiences, but for Justin Shug, that final season of his OHL career in 2010-2011 in Mississauga, what a season it was, 41 goals, and he added 10 more in the postseason. As you've seen already, he's got two here in game number two. There was one thing that Justin Shug could do in that season. It was put the puck in the net, and it was on full display in this series against Owen Sound. After 40 minutes of game two, Mississauga holding on to a 4-2 lead at the Bayshore. Period three coming up as part of this special presentation of the OHL Championship Series, game number two of the OHL Final here on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie, president of the Own Sound Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our Own Sound Attack Challenge sponsors. Their contributions make Rotary projects a reality. Are you the type who would keep going or stop? It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca. I did it. I need it. A hero gave it. And I am alive. As an organ donor, you can save up to eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others. Please go to our website. Pledge a gift of life. You'll be glad you did.
On Rogers TV, we have a reality show like no other. It has a great cast of characters. Some you may have even helped land the role. Each episode has something different. Plans are devised, decisions are made, votes are cast, and money is spent. It's local reality TV that you won't want to miss. And it's exclusive to Rogers Cable customers. Catch your municipal council coverage on Rogers TV. Visit rogerstv.com for broadcast details. Now you can enjoy the Amazon Prime Video app on Ignite TV. Just say Amazon Prime Video into your Ignite voice remote and watch Amazon Originals like The Expanse. They wanted to fight. We'll give them one. The Wilds. Are we in the actual Bermuda Triangle? And The Boys. That is amazing. Prime members can stream Amazon Originals, movies, TV shows, and more on Ignite TV today. Now you're in command. These numbers will tell you that this team's pretty comfortable with a lead after 40. 47 times they have led after the second period between the regular season and the playoffs. 47 times they have come out on top. Four on four hockey is how we will begin the third period. Justin Shug with a pair of goals. His sixth and seventh of this postseason after finding the net 41 times during the regular campaign. And leading the point parade for the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, Jordan Mara, the pair of goals as well. And Mississauga just keeps on keeping on. Goals seven and eight for Jordan Mayer. 5-3 setback, sorry Peter, in the Eastern Conference Final. Their only loss here in the postseason and their only loss, well, in ages. Have won 23 of 24. And the building trying to urge the home side on in their first home game ever for the Owen Sound attack in the OHL Championship Series. Hishin racing back for the puck. Shug upended. Hishin and Wilson looking to regain their form a little bit. Blacker with some room, but the puck slides by him. He has a goal in the game, tripped up by Fleming, and Fleming will be penalized, and Owen Sound's going to go to the power play. And quickly, Blacker turns it over to Fleming, who will go to the box, and the parade to the box continues. It's a smart play by Blacker here. The situation already 4-on-4, four four, just hand the puck over. Down he goes, thanks to the stick of Fleming. Owen Sound's fourth power play. They're one out of three. They were two for six in the 5-2 loss Tuesday in game one. Hishin remains out with Blacker, McNarty, and Stanish. Had to appreciate how honest he was with us, Sam, between periods. Oh, boy. But you know what, Peter? It's one thing to make those bold statements. It's another thing to back them up. We'll see how Stanish and Blacker his defense partner that he also called out uh, perform here in period three. Stanish a member of the Barry Colts that were swept in last year's league championship series by Windsor. Hishin to Stanish. McNarty, he has his 12th of the playoffs tonight. Hishin. Anderson made it look rather routine. Hishin off the boards. Nice cut. To McNarty again. Robbie McNarty down low, tip but wide. As Blacker let the shot go. And Anderson off the end boards, takes no chances, covers it up. Well, Robbie McNarty has been successful scoring goals in each of the first two games of this series, but Mark Reeves is going to need more out of his top guys. I mean, Garrett Wilson still pointless in the series. Hishin with just one assist here tonight. Those two guys are going to have to lead the way for Mark Reeves if Owen Sound is going to have success in this series. They have all year long, 87 and 86 points respectively in the regular season for Hishin and the Florida pick, Wilson. Stanish, rink wide to his partner, Jesse Blacker. Hishin loose to the line and Stanish. Stanish again, a good low drive, just missed. As Shaw and Canton's coincidental minors have expired. 40 to go in the power play. Hishin, nice toe drag through his legs and a good backhander. And Anderson with a good stop. 
There's some of that first round skill on display courtesy of Nishin. Parente knocked down Wilson with authority. And Sezikis, no mistake as he clears it down the ice. Stager. Plays it for Halmo, regrouping on this power play, which has the seven seconds left in it. One last rush, maybe, as McNarty tips it in and gives chase. Hanton, high off the glass, Shemich keeps it in. Jeff Shemich. And a penalty kill as Fleming joins the fray out of the penalty box, and a big one for Dave Cameron's crew. As they continue to lead by a pair. Andrew Shaw, Rister, just off of Anderson, hard drive loose in front, and Halmo unable to get at the rebound. Pretty good message sent by Mark Reed, hey boys, we're down two goals, get everything in the kitchen, sink to the net, Owen Sound doing that here in this period. Anderson, one hand to Canton, Canton ahead to Kitson, Maxim Kitson. To Partman, Mika Partman with great speed as he went to the backhand and missed on the short side. Parton digging for it along with Jay Gilbert. Partman wins the battle to Maxim Kitson. Mayer back to the line. DeMello a wrist shot. That goes wide. Sits on the net. Shot that and off by Kitson as play continues. And McNarty will slide it ahead to Liam Helix with Michael Halmo. Partnan at the end of a lengthy shift to center. He'll shoot it in and out of play. So Mika Partnan showing great speed as he gets reunited in this five on five situation with his line mates Kitson and Mayer. Again, good transition. Watch Parton, right side of your screen. I mean, he takes off. As soon as that puck goes up ice, it's like he shot out of a cannon. And great recognition on the part of Max Kitson with the backhand pass, knowing that Parton is going to support him with speed in the middle of the ice. Creates a good opportunity. Kitson to Mika Parton. Kitson with another point in the game. Now in this postseason, 15 points. Joined the team after helping Russia win the World Junior Gold Medal. That some people from our country would like to forget one period. I would be one of those. A tough break for Hockey Canada in that situation, but give Max Kitson and his teammates a lot of credit. And you could kind of see their character, couldn't you? In the six-game Canada-Russia Subway Super Series. Yeah, they won a very similar game like that. Down three goals and uh, came back to win in a shootout in Camlet. That was a very resilient bunch. And it turned into gold in Buffalo. Jared Maidens pressuring Rob Fleck in the Chicago fourth rounder reverses. Shemish able to keep it alive. And D'Souza punished by Shemish as the puck goes down the ice. The game has kind of finally settled in, and it took a long time. Uh, a little more flow in this third. Yes. Brace. Blocked by Canton. Canton fans on a clearing attempt. Brace. He's hooked up. And another Owen Sound power play opportunity upcoming. That's what you got to do. You get in the offensive zone, keep your feet moving. And especially if you're a guy like Brace, who's got that good speed, you really want to take full advantage of it. Canton misses on that first clearing attempt, and as his stick goes up parallel to the ice, it's not much of a drag down on the part of Brace, but enough to draw the penalty. And Dave Cameron's team once again goes down a man. 11 shots is what Owen Sound has managed on their first four power plays. The one goal, the Blacker goal, that tied it in the first at two. And Blacker has the puck now. Joey Hishin and a good kick save by Anderson. Hishin, Wilson, McNardi, Blacker, and Stanich trying to cut the gap to one. Off Casey Sezikis. There has not been a better player for my money in this game than number 11. Yeah, I'd say the same thing about game one, Peter. McNardi, been very good too. 
Fleming hook by Wilson, and now there'll be an Owen Sound penalty. And Stager will touch it. And again, Owen Sound really having some trouble trying to create momentum, trying to maintain possession while on the power play in the offensive zone. And as the pucks turn back over, Fleming with a chance to clear is hooked on the play. A very similar hook to what sent Mark Canton into the box. And so now things are even up. Mark Reeds, I'm sure, frustrated. His team with a terrific run, finished first, 46 win season. Knocked off London, swept Plymouth, and then upended Windsor on the road to this OHL final. And you can almost tell by his body language that it's like, still haven't seen that team yet in this series. Yeah, I would have to agree. We will before it's all said and done. Maybe before the night's up. Good matchup here in the Ontario League final. Helis. Gilbert to cutting. Cutting that's tipped and just went wide. Stuart Percy. Mayer, little kick held in by Helis. First shot was in behind him. Mayer's maybe played some soccer. I guess that's why they kicked the ball around before the game. Uh, yeah. And Blacker have scored for the home team. And Owen Sound trying to tie this series at one before heading back to the Hershey Center for game three tomorrow. We'll have game four right back here in Owen Sound for you Sunday afternoon. Petgrave lost an edge. A close in opportunity stopped by Stager. Carazio spinning on this four on four and he tests Stager. Good pad save. And now a two on one, a three on one for Owen Sound. Petgrave, McNardy, and Shaw. Petgrave, McNardy, he tipped it wide. Tried the wraparound. Petgrave urged to shoot. Blacker does. Into the midsection of McNardy. Who has one salmon could have two or three quite easily. Yeah, he's had a couple of really good chances for McNarty, but give him credit for putting himself in position to have those opportunities. Swing and a miss by Fleming, and that creates a three-on-one opportunity. Right side of your screen. Petrev will take it in and he'll wait, 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 as Durazio's the lone man back. By the time he gets the pass over, McNarty just runs out of real estate as JP Anderson got over in a hurry as well. Turning points in games. Might look back at that one as this game continues. Helix knocks down Stewart Percy. Just 15 seconds to go. In a power play for Mississauga. Shug. Good cut to the middle. Now he'll wheel back. Shug fakes the shot. Percy lots of traffic. Off the goal post. Stager kicks out the Sezikis try. And Wilson's penalty is over. Not a lot of time to operate with that power play, but it nearly paid dividends again. And Mississauga has three of their four goals with a power play in this game. Smith Pelly takes a stick in the face area. There'll be an Owen Sound minor upcoming. And this one will go against Jesse Blacker for a high stick. Smith Pelly does a great job protecting this puck. He gets his big body in the way. And so Blacker tries to hack and whack from behind and comes up, clips Smith Pelly right in the chops. And shot from Stuart Percy a little earlier on, right off the post of Stager. Good pass, plenty of room, gets the shot through, bing, post. Blacker not too happy, takes a seat. Power play number eight for the majors. Garazio, Fleming. Two assists in the game. Mayer with two goals, hustles to hold it in in the line. An opportunity for Hishin to move it out. Couldn't crack the puck down. Robert Fleck to the right point in Fleming. For Durazio. Durazio, a wrister that goes wide. Backhander by Fleck. Winds up on the tape of Jordan Mayer. Kitson, Durazio, and now Fleming again. Durazio, wrist shot, hit Mayer and went wide. Kitson through the seam. 
Fleming and Fleck. Nice puck movement. Another penalty on the way, and it's going to go to Owen Sound again. Gilbert's going to get called for a headshot. Rob Fleck, who has been in the midst of everything all night, uses that big body. And because he's tough, he tends to be a target out there. He's been really good in this game for Dave Cameron. And you'll see the middle right side of your screen. Gilbert goes right up into the head area. It's that left hand on the follow through that clips Flick in the head. So Jay Gilbert calls for that check to the head. Two man advantage, the second one of the game for the majors. They capitalized with their first. And for 52 more seconds. Percy down low, Sezikis scores! Hit Shemish and went in. And Jeffrey Shemich doing what he can to try and block this pass coming out front, but when he does so, it's a simple bank shot and in. And for Casey Sezikis, he gets rewarded with the Major's fifth goal of the game. And his fifth of the playoffs. Now Jesse Blacker leaves this game. He's been ejected from the game. You'll see Shemich doing what he can here. And as Stager moves, the legs open up. And in the back of the net it goes. And the best player in this game gets rewarded. Jesse Blacker has just been issued a 10-minute misconduct. Still very unhappy about the penalty that he received. And now Mark Reed's team finds itself in arrears by three. Well, sometimes I think, Peter, you have to look at a game and you have to say, all right, if it's going to be officiated in a certain way, you have to adjust. And whether you think the, the officiating has been good, bad, or indifferent, you still have to find that measure of discipline that works in concert with how the game's being officiated. Suzekis with his fifth from Percy, who has two assists in the game. At 9.41, and still a minute 35 to go in another Mississauga power play. They are four out of eight. Suzekis in deep. Canton had yet to join the fray. Smith Pelly towards Shug. Shemich breaks it up and clears it in. Mark Canton. Percy finds Flick. Flick dances into the zone. Smith Pelly. Devante Smith Pelly protects it. To Shug off his skate. Stanish on the boards. Shemish unable to clear it out of the zone. Shug to Smith Pelly. Back in front. Great stop by Stager off Flick on the doorstep. How about Flick getting rewarded? Plenty of power play time for the game he's had. Well deserved. Shug, two already. His blast looking for a hat trick. He has two on the season dating back to the regular campaign. His last one, January 16th against Ottawa. Down 5-2, Scott Stager not giving up whatsoever. And a beautiful cross-crease passing play as Smith Pelly gets it across the crease to Rob Flick. Look at how quick Stager is able to get across. He throws out that pad. Otherwise, we're looking at a 6-2. To Rob Flick. To Rob Flick. <laughs> <laughs> that fit very nicely. Mayor to Rob Flick. Stopped by <laughs> Stager. Yeah, he heard it. He liked it so much, he wanted it again. He'd like to turn that light on. Well, there is uh, Scott Stager. And Amazingly, gets in nine minutes and 37 seconds to end a game against Plymouth just to get him back into game action. And, uh, the, excuse me, in the series against London. Well, in Plymouth game one, Michael Zador has a stomach virus after the second period of play. Scott Stager comes in. He hasn't looked back since. Now they won that game right on our network in late overtime. Game one versus Plymouth. And never looked back. Jesse Blacker, the winner in that game. Jesse Blacker out of this game right now with a 10-minute misconduct. 2-2 two, two after one, and Mississauga 
really making hay in this series in second period. They've outscored Owen Sound five to nothing in the second period. And they're closing in on a two games to nothing lead in this best of seven series. Shaw to the on-rushing Keevan Cutting. Cutting into the corner, plays it through the crease. Shaw, Andrew Shaw, in front off Fleming and nearly found the net. Hit the side of it. And will cooler heads prevail? Casey Zizekas, two goals, two assists in the series, including a marker tonight. And once again, he's been the best player on either side. Why, Peter? Because of his ability to have good positioning, because of his uh, work ethic and back checking, his ability to create chances. And when you do all of that hard work, at some point at the end of the day, you're going to get rewarded. And for his efforts, Zeke is finally rewarded here in period number three, the benefactor of a good bounce on a centering attempt off the skate or leg of Jeffrey Shemichin in. The one goal tonight, three points in game one on Tuesday. Kishin. Stick handling. Great feed, Wilson, and a shot blocked by Kent. McNardi joining Kishin and Wilson now. Looking for some offense in a hurry in this four on four, going with three forwards in Petre. He's almost like a forward at times. Kishin carries in. Thought about shooting. Miss Garrett Wilson. And those two have just been a little off in the first few games of this set. Yeah, and, and really it speaks to time. Pick great. 106 to go on the four on four to McNardi. Checked by Percy's, who has had a solid night and has added two assists. Sezikis run into by Shemich. Shug. His blast, shot block, and McCarty felt that. Can't say enough good things about the effort of Robbie McNarty. Yeah, he's been fantastic. A couple of great chances, a goal in this one as well. Max Keatson gets it in to the zone. Pushed offside. The series will continue tomorrow night at the Hershey Center, game three. That'll be in Rogers television. We're back here Sunday for game four and then the if necessary comes into play Tuesday in Mississauga May 12th in Owen Sound in the seventh and final game should it be required in Mississauga. All three of those games can be seen on the OHL action pack in Rogers television. Pretty awesome. You can almost watch every single game in the league now. Yeah. Shemich. Jeff Shemich. Body continues to tangle in the corner. Receives some help from Jared Maidens and Corrente. The outlet to Smith Pelly and into the neutral zone comes the puck for Mayer and Smith Pelly with David Corrente. Corrente off the body of Shemich. One of the most difficult names for a play by play guy, Shemich. That's not easy. As Maidens clears it in. 5.42 to go in the third. Oh, defensive dominance, the key for Dave Cameron's team. Although they scored the most goals in the Ontario Hockey League, their success here in the playoffs predicated largely on defense. The penalty kill coming into tonight at 88.4%, goals against 1.79, and have allowed just on average 25 shots per game. One number we don't show you, 24% on the power play coming in. They're four for nine. You know where that number's going, don't you? North. And not to Alaska. Helis. For Childerly, who hasn't seen a lot of time in this game. Number 20, Burdnikov. And tied up by Schoenmakers. 36-24, the shots in favor of the Majors, who have scored three unanswered in this game to put themselves in the driver's seat in the game and in the series. A long way to go. Owen Sound didn't win 46 and win a very difficult Western Conference without being a terrific team. 
Yeah, they've got depth. They have to get back to what was successful for them during the regular season and for the most part in this playoff. Mir, DeMello, Kitson couldn't control it on the backhand. Has it again, Kitson. Block shot by Petrick. And Mir, Kitson, and Partman have supplied a couple of goals. Sammy, you can really say I think the difference in this series to this point is that Dave Cameron's two scoring lines have both been going. And the other team probably needs a little bit more from its number one scoring yeah. line. And you know what? Yeah, I'd break it down for that. Number one line against number one line. And yeah, throw in power plays, but both guys, top guys, always play in the power play. And when you look at Chug, Smith, Pelly, and Sezikis right now, outlasting and, and outplaying Garrett Wilson, Joey Hishon, and either Burdnikoff or Fritch as it was in game one. And Fritch is a big loss yeah, for this huge, team. Yeah, huge. Well, you hope he can make his way back into the lineup in this series. And if that doesn't work out, you certainly hope he'll answer the bell when Owen Sound opens their portion of the MasterCard Memorial Cup against the Western League champions on Saturday, the 21st of May. Will that be Portland or Kootenai? They start tomorrow. Kootenai with an unbelievable run. They were the number four seed in the Western League's Eastern Conference, and they've won 11 in a row. Yep, including sweeps of the Medicine Hat Tigers and the Saskatoon Blades before that. I think shocking everyone right across the Canadian hockey league. The Blades were the number one seed in the entire league. Yeah. Cameron Brace, a backhander to Andrew Shaw, toe drag, and a good shoulder stop by J.P. Anderson, who's made some pretty impressive saves when called upon and that's what's so tough when you play mississauga if they do have that letdown they can rely on a guy like anderson to save their bacon their letdowns are few and far between but when they do happen jp anderson is there and what that tends to do peter is really really frustrate the opposition get a little sampling of jp anderson's fine work signed as a free agent by the san jose sharks good rebound control off the one timer nice Lower net coverage, good stop there on the original chance. Another good job with the pads, way out at the top of the crease, off the shoulder. I mean, just about everything here. You couldn't have had a better start to the postseason than this young man oh, had. Boy. Allowed one goal in a series sweep over Belleville, shut them out three games in a row. And a total of four shutouts here in the Ontario Hockey League playoffs. The other two finals, one now underway. The heavily favored St. John Sea Dogs with a 2-1 triumph tonight at home over Benoit Gru's Gatineau Olympique to take a one game to nothing series lead. And tomorrow night at the Rose Garden in Portland, the Winter Hawks back in the Western Hockey League final for the first time since losing to Red Deer in 2001 against the 2002 MasterCard Memorial Cup champion, the Kootenai Ice. What a job by Chris Knobloch in Kootenai. I mean, barely old enough to get his driver's license. And he has sent that team uh, into an opportunity to get a chance to play for the MasterCard Memorial Cup. What a, what a marvelous job he's done. And I think when you look, yeah, it's been an 11-game run. But when you look at the last eight games in particular, I don't know if there's anyone across the entire Canadian Hockey League that's played better hockey than the Kootenai Ice. I was in attendance for five of those eight, and they have been superb. Net empty. Mark Reed's pulling out all stops here, trailing by three late. Shug, an opportunity for a hat trick, but he was lifted. Now another one, and he'll miss. No icing, though. Oh, here it is. Shot. The all-forward affair. If nothing oh. else, this gives you an opportunity to try this out for maybe a more important go-round if you're Mark Reeves. And maybe to supply some confidence when these two teams get right back at it tomorrow in Mississauga. Yeah, I like it. If, if it's a way to spark your top guys, especially Hishin and Wilson, then by all means, go get them. You know, Stanish out there with five forwards. Now Stager will come back 
into the goal, but he'll be playing more like a road hockey goalie out way in front of that blue ice, expecting Foley to come off here once Owen Sound gets possession. Once again, we'll have game four of this series for you Sunday afternoon, 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, on your Rogers Sportsnet channels. Mignardi, good gap control by Percy. That guy doesn't grow on you. The more you watch him, I don't know who would. Eddie Eddie. You might find him in the front of the handbook. Wilson loses the handle, cutting to the middle, and Meir, who has a chance for a hat trick, ran into Petgrave and fanned on a shot attempt. Mika Partnan in behind Kitson. Meir again thwarted. Fleming wouldn't have counted. They hadn't cleared the zone. So a minute and a half is what is remaining. And Dave Cameron's Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, they desperately want to go to the MasterCard Memorial Cup through the front door, will all of a sudden find themselves two wins away from capturing their first Ontario Hockey League title. Well, and Dave Cameron had a good chance to talk to him after the practice the other day and said this is a, a really tough time of year to gauge energy, to gauge fitness, to know when to give guys the day off or to know when to back off of them in practice. And he's done a masterful job at towing that fine line to still be able to generate maximum effort out of his team night in and night out. 53 wins and about to make it 24 out of their last 25 dating back to the regular season when they won their last 10 games. About to improve the 48 no one leading after two periods when you include the postseason and the regular season. More rough stuff and there's a trend that really began from the opening faceoff and has it stopped a little more so here in the third it's settled down as Halmo into it with Schoenmakers. And they remember collided earlier in the game. Yeah, and Almo looks like he's going to get the escort. All the way to the Owen Sound room with under a minute left to play. Now, the, the, it ended kind of innocently, but watch Almo. He just continues to do the body, the, the shots to the chops, and then he comes around with the right. And that's what will signal his exit from this game. The big right hand right there on Schoenmakers. I'll tell you, I, I give Mississauga a lot of credit, Peter, because in that situation, you can, you know, the ability to just snap and say, hey, we've had enough of this kind of rough and tumble stuff after the play, but ultimately discipline here, knowing that, hey, let's just take our win here on the road. Let's get out of here quietly, take our two-game lead into the Hershey Center for game three on Friday night. Discipline's been a factor for power play goals. There it is. Really need we say more. Dave Cameron's team 56 seconds away from heading home up to. On sound bench you can see a noticeably different body language. And we're waiting the fate here as the penalties get sorted out. Back to the drawing board here for Mark Reeds in the Owen Sound attack. There's enough talent, there's enough depth in this hockey club that, it, that a two-game deficit, obviously you should be concerned about it, but you shouldn't think that this series is over if you're Mark Reeds in the attack. Coincidental minors with 56 seconds to go. Garrett Wilson in the year of the linesman. And Dave Cameron's really giving it to somebody. And it looked like it might have been an opposing player. Or is it the referee? Yeah, he's getting it from both ends. Probably the referee. Owen Sound has five players on the ice, but I'm pretty sure they should only employ four at this particular time. Net empty. But the net is empty. And that's what everyone's pointing at here, just to make sure. the whole crowd any happier and like their team they're a little frustrated 
This community has thoroughly enjoyed watching its team enter a place they've never been before, but we talk a lot about Owen Sound in that place. The guys on the other side, it's a somewhat new territory for them as well. Yeah, a couple of cracks for Dave Cameron when the majors played at the barn downtown in Toronto. Getting into the Eastern Conference but not winning and finally getting the opportunity to do that here this year. And a backhand into an empty net from Chris D'Souza will truly put this one on ice. 5-2 win in game one. Empty netter here to make it 6-2. Chris D'Souza, an important mid-season acquisition, came over from the London Knights. And that was a very tough decision for Dave Cameron to make. As an overage player, he forced to, him to get rid of backup goaltender Anthony Peters. And the brother of Justin Peters, who plays for Carolina. Uh, very well liked by his teammates amongst the top goaltenders statistically when that was made and backing up J.P. Anderson. Joseph Cramarosa with the lone assist on that empty netter by Chris D'Souza, his fourth of the postseason and his second goal in this series. He scored in game one on Tuesday. As time winds down, and the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors will enjoy a two-game to nothing lead, heading home for game three tomorrow night. There it is. Just making sure that there's no more activity. The linesmen, the officials all getting involved here. And you know what, Peter? No one sound has to put this one in the bank. Has to be like a closer in baseball. Forget about it altogether. Come back uh, tomorrow night with a very disciplined, patient game plan and expect to work the full 60 minutes, if not more, if they're going to beat this Mississauga St. Michael's Majors Hockey Club. Justin Shug, Jordan Mayer, both with two goals apiece. J.P. Anderson turned aside 25 of 27. The Majors with a 2-0 lead in this Rogers OHL Championship Affair. Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie, president of the On Sound Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our On Sound Attack Challenge sponsors. Their contributions make Rotary projects a reality. symptom of bladder cancer. Don't ignore this warning sign. Not even once. Since when did we start locking people up without a trial in this country? I'm going to make him pay. He has been held against his will for six years without a single charge being laid against him. I am innocent. He knew all the details, but he wasn't within 10 miles of the killing. Why is that? Why is that? Whoa, whoa. It's the little things, Jimmy. It's the little things that rip you apart. It's the little things that get you caught. Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m., it's the RTV Quiz. Giovanni Petiti hosts a weekly trivia competition that lets you play from the comfort of your couch. Play along at home and challenge your friends. And don't forget to follow along on social media. Let us know who's top of trivia and you can find yourself featured on a future episode. Are you kidding me, folks? It's the RTV Quiz, Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. on Rogers TV or at rogerstv.com slash RTV Quiz. Don't forget to join us on Great County Life at Home next week. We're going to be talking with Paula Karnacki from the Women's Centre, Grey Bruce. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit stoptracktragedies.ca. Welcome back to the special presentation of the 2011 OHL Championship on Rogers TV, part of the 10-year anniversary of Owen Sound's 
OHL Championship, the first ever in franchise history. My name is Manny Pable along with Mark McKelvey. You've been watching game two of the OHL final between the attack and the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, a game where the Majors went up 2 nothing in the series thanks to a 6-2 to two victory at the Harry Lumley Bay Shore Community Center. And, and Mark, things did not look very good, not only for the attack, but for attack fans after this game. No, it didn't. And you think about the fact that Owen Sound had, uh, at the time, just an incredible season to come through the Western Conference. And you're taking on the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, a team that was at the top of the OHL standings for basically the entire year. They finished in that spot. They were hosting the Memorial Cup. But it was going to be interesting to see how these two teams did match up when you come out of your conferences. And traditionally, as many OHL fans would know, especially here in the 2000s, the Western Conference has been very dominant. But this was a very deep and a very talented Mississauga St. Michael's major squad. And Owen Sal was finding that out firsthand. The one thing about this attack team, when you think about it, Manny, is when you go through their playoff run, in the first round against the London Knights, they went six games. That obviously was a series that Owen Sound was expected to win. But getting over that hump, facing a little bit of adversity, they really settled in, and they just flew through rounds two and three. Of course, they had the sweep of the Plymouth Whalers and then a five-game series win over the Windsor Spitfires. So here was a team that hadn't faced a lot of adversity in recent weeks, and they were certainly facing it now, falling down two to nothing. And you talked about that talented majors team, Casey Sezikis, and his name we haven't really mentioned yet as part of game two, but he was everywhere on the ice, as you just noticed in game two. He scored in the middle of that third period, his fifth of the postseason, to put Mississauga up five to two. And then Chris D'Souza, uh, a power forward type player for the majors in that OHL season, he scored into an empty net to seal the six to two victory for the majors at the Bay Shore in game two. And Mississauga's offense was on full display. Again, they outshot Owen Sound 11 9 in that third period and had a 39 27 edge in the game. Scott Stager tried to keep the attack in the game, stopping 33 shots. J.P. Anderson had 25 saves. But one of the storylines after game two, Mark, was would Mark Reeds keep Stager in goal the next night back at the Hershey Center for game three, or who would start? If you remember, fans, there was a three-headed monster in goal, as Mark Reeds described at 4 and Sound in that postseason run. Yeah, Scott Stager in there for games one and two. And again, I don't think anyone was faulting the goaltending coming out of these two games. But when you fall down 2 nothing, you do need to shake things up. Game three, just the very next night back in Mississauga. So he had decisions to make. He obviously had options. I think when you look back through the first couple of games, and especially here in game number two, as you just saw, the majors going four for eight on the power play. And uh, the special teams... And the officiating, I guess you could say, Manny, would certainly be uh, it brought up as a storyline in this series, especially as it goes on. But for Owen Sound, there were several areas they needed to clean up. And I think a lot of the times when you can come back the very next night, maybe it does play a little bit to your advantage. You could say Mississauga had, of course, all the momentum up two to nothing going to game number three, but they weren't necessarily heading back to what would be considered a raucous Hershey Center. There was going to be a lot of attack fans there, and I think this Owen Sound attack team knew that they were going to have to come back in game number three and play as if this was it. This was their season on the line, and uh, to your point, goaltending, lineup changes, certainly everything that a, goal, a coach is going to think about, but for the attack, mainly it was just getting back to their game and not conceding this series early on to the majors because we have to remember manny the attack did have their ticket punched the memorial cup by the fact that the majors were going to be the hosts and they didn't want the majors go into the front door owen sound wanted to be the team going in that front door of the memorial cup in 2011. Uh, you mentioned special teams they were certainly a factor not only did mississauga go four for eight as you mentioned mark owen sound only went one for five with the man advantage and it certainly played a role in game two the one thing that i did like at the end of game two that fans may have noticed is that owen sound showed some guts at the end. Mike Camel, Liam Helis, they're getting misconduct penalties and extracurricular roughing penalties. 
they weren't lying down. And I think from a fan perspective, everybody thought, okay, this team isn't folding just yet. Even though they're down 2 nothing in this series, they have a little bit of something that they wanted to fight for. Absolutely. And, and you have to look at that as something that was going to be a factor heading forward. I think if Owen Sound realized maybe they weren't putting the puck in the back of the net just yet, they had to be tough to play against. And they had to bring that fight uh, back to the majors. And to your point, the names that you just rhymed off there, Halmo, Helis, I mean, those were the kind of players, heart and soul, who were going to not go down without a fight. They were always going to go down swinging. And uh, at the end of the day, if you're a major fan, you might look at it as a little bit of sour grapes, but this is a seven-game series, and there's still a lot of hockey to be played. And Owen Sound certainly wanted to let Mississauga know that they weren't going to go down without a fight. In fact, it would be the attack who would deliver the next punch in game three. That is the next game that Rogers TV will present as part of this special anniversary edition and look back at the 2011 OHL championship. I'm Eddie Pava. He's Mark McKelvey. Stay tuned. Rogers TV not only will bring all seven games from that 2011 OHL championship series, but a special attack wrap with members from that 2011 team will be played over the next week. Thanks for watching tonight, and we'll catch you again for Game 3 of the 2011 OHL Final on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie, president of the On Sound Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our Own Sound Attack Challenge sponsors. Their contributions make Rotary Projects a reality. Call the Rogers TV Viewer Response Line, email us, or connect with us on social media. experience and when you look back when you were younger and starting out I would have never thought that I'd be going to see the 67s play and I've been so lucky to be going for so many years it just doesn't seem possible but when you look back it seems like yesterday we still haven't lost the desire and the excitement to go and watch them I met Marilyn at Central Pay Office when we were about maybe 17. At the finance department. There was two units there. I was on one side, but she was on the other side. There was a long time we hadn't seen each other. We went to a 67 game and she was up about three rows from me. We ran into each other and made up friends again. And we like going, we like razzing all the players. What are you doing, Trombley? Mahaffa Meyer, he could play better. He usually takes that puck up and goes. Now, what did Nine do that for? They waste too much time passing. Two isn't playing the way he can play. They can't hear us, but they, we know what they're doing. <laughs> he should know better. Sometimes I'll have things to go on Friday night with my son and his wife and my granddaughter. And I'll say, on a Friday night? Are you crazy? Change that night. I said, I can't miss my 67s game. Oh, one won't hurt you. So no. Nope. <laughs> for 50 years, you've each gotten season tickets to the 67s. And for 30 of those years, you've seen them play together. Would you say that you're recognizable faces in the TD Place Arena, having supported the team for so many years? It's amazing the people who come and speak to us. It's nice to be recognized that they're going to the games and they know we're there in those seats all the time. So I guess it's just normal to say hello. Since we met Mrs. D, uh, she brings a lot of the boys up. And then sometimes when they're not playing, if they're hurt or that, they sit up behind us. And we've told the boys that shoot the puck, don't be passing it all the time. <laughs> They probably walk away and say, those women, are they ever bossy? <laughs> Brian Kilrath, 67th coach for more than 30 years, came by to say hi to you yesterday. coach. How many years did you help me, though? Oh, my God. Years and years. Yeah, that's where I got all my tips. Yeah. What does that mean to you to be recognizable to someone who's left such a legacy in the 67th organization? 
I couldn't believe it when he came up and he said, oh, not you girls. And I'm thinking, Brian. <laughs> when Brian was there, it was just unreal how good the team was. He seemed to have a way with the boys. Over 50 years, you've seen a lot of players come in and out of Ottawa. What's it like to see some of those guys now playing at the highest level in the NHL? It's an honor to be able to watch TV now and say, oh, I watched him play as a kid. When you look in the stats of the paper and you hear these players that played for 67s, you watch now when the games are on TV. Right now, I think I counted that I can count about 17 to 20 players still playing. I know over 50 years you have a lot of different special hockey memories on and off the ice, but is there any that stands out for you as being something that you're always going to remember? Oh, yeah. Our last Memorial Cup when we were tied, we told one of the players, shoot the damn puck, and that's all you heard. Shoot it, shoot it, and he's standing there, and we're thinking, if you don't shoot, we're going to lose. And finally, he shot it and went in, and, and then they all went over and jumped in the canal, and I thought, oh, you crazy kids. I'll never forget one night I was almost crying going to my seat. I had four tickets and I saw this man come in with three children. I gave him the four tickets. I still get emotional when I think of this. The one little boy looked at his dad and he says, now we can have some popcorn, eh, daddy? And that just broke my heart. Des from Almont, he would get a butterscotch pie. And I don't mean just a small pie, I mean a huge pie. And then he brings it down, and I said, Des, you'll never get that in there. I'll oh, put it in. So he brought it in, put it under our seats, and at intermission, we were sitting there, all of us eating a butterscotch pie. What has kept you coming back and so excited and invested in the 67s team? The night out, to see the players playing hockey and see what's going on, it's a good entertainment night. For me, I think it's the, the outing and something to look forward to and the fellowship. Maybe eight, ten of us always sat together. It was down now just to Marilyn and I. It was an evening of entertainment. We'd go out, the gang of us, for meals before the game. Well, good afternoon. What does your friendship mean to the both of you and what does it mean that you get to go to 67's games together? means a lot when you're by yourself and you've got somebody who cares. Just to have our friendship and be able to go out together and then we talk about the game or the players and we enjoy each other's company. I've enjoyed every year of it from the beginning till now and I'm very grateful to have Marilyn as such a good friend who is there for me, as I said, my right hand. If I didn't have it, I'd be lost. I don't know what I'd do in the winter months. I'm on some Mary and Body. To find out what is happening in our city, please watch our council meeting on Monday nights at 7 p.m. on Rogers TV. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today.